you already know what time it is. It is that time of the season. New set is going to be dropped, and you already know that means we got to make a prediction list, a tier list uh, for this meta. Guys, this is going to be the EX4 tier list. Um, obviously, this isn't every single deck I could have included, but I think it's a decent amount and pretty much most of the new ones. Uh, so go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below whether you agree with this list or not, whether you agree with my placements or not, because I'm always down to have a lively discussion, guys. So let's go ahead and get started by ranking these decks. So number one is going to be Beelzemon, and I think the big thing a lot of people want to know is, is this deck still viable post ban list, post uh, uh, EX2 Impmon going to just one copy per deck and while I don't think it is as quick and as insane as it was before I still think this deck is very very strong um, and I would probably still say a contender for tier 1 a lot of times if you are able to uh, you know, set up as or quickly as you have been, even if you don't hit, you know, two, three Impmons off of a single mill, um, you still do have one copy, and the fact that you can still go through your deck really, really quickly uh, means you're still usually resolving that card. Now, that's not the only reason to play the deck. You obviously still have Beelzemon X. is still a crazy card. Uh, burn two to three security on legs. Uh, so I still think this deck is really, really powerful. Is it going to win any events? Maybe not. Is it going to dominate the meta uh, as it did in the BT12 format probably not but I think just to be safe I'm gonna continue putting this in tier 1 uh, maybe a high 1.5 but I'm gonna go ahead and go tier 1 for now uh, now next is going to be Omnimon Alter B or the Alter S uh, kind of Jogris deck the black base uh, this is probably one of the most uh, fun decks I think I'm looking forward to out of the new set uh, just because it can do some really cool things the way I like to talk about this deck is it's basically like what red purple Imperial was trying to do like go from a rookie to a level 7 or a level 6 in one turn which this deck can honestly do sometimes now the thing that this deck doesn't isn't really good at is like the cards don't really do anything until you get to like your Omnimon Alter S and Alter B uh, the deck is just like basically vanillas that just evolve into like another Digimon for like a reduced cost which albeit is still pretty good they have passive effects such as reboot and blocker and stuff um, but you're not actively like blowing up your opponent's stuff or hitting their security or anything like that you're kind of just waiting for a couple turns if you can get your setup and then making your alter s and alter s it's quite an impactful card when you evolve it and very annoying to actually get rid of um, and not to mention Alter B is a really strong finisher uh, but I honestly think this is more of a fun deck than anything I'll probably just put it in like I'd say like tier 2 this deck's like okay um, maybe who knows someone will break this deck absolutely open um, and again, if you can, you know, draw the right pieces, uh, you can do some really cool things, but there lies the problem. You need way more pieces than like any of the other uh, tier one decks need, I think, to do anything uh, impactful. Uh, next is going to be Imperial Dramon. Shout out to Dan Ving. Uh, this deck is honestly still really cool. Um, and I hadn't actually played into the new stuff or the BT12 support until like last week. And um, I think it's pretty decent for like a roguish deck. Um, but unfortunately, the days of this deck dominating the meta like in BT8 um, or just taking out multiple security in one turn, um, I really don't think this deck is going to do anything. So I'm going to put it in Rogue. Uh, it's certainly not unplayable, but it's not really that good. Um, next is going to be Red Hybrid. I think what is one of the strongest decks in the format, and this actually did win uh, a regional uh, last week as of recording this video, um, faced off against Bloom Lords in the final. And for good reasons, like you can tell that this deck is good just on, on on paper all of your guys float you have multiple security effects very high dp digimon memory efficiency you can blow stuff up with emperor greymon float into takuya's you got access to warp evolution stuff like that so a lot of uh, very very powerful tools at your disposal um and especially with mulligan i think this um you know it reduces the chance of you drawing like all tamers or all hybrids or anything um so i honestly still think this deck is a tier one status i think emperor greymon um and all the new support from bt12 is still carrying it really really strong 
amazing stuff. Uh, Gallantmon is the next deck. Uh, this is still one of my favorite decks to play, just as at like a local level. Um, and we did get new Chaos Gallantmon support in the deck, uh, new Medieval Gallantmon as well. Uh, Chaos Gallant, I think, does do some cool things. Um, he's got an effect where you can like end of turn uh, delete like one of your Gallantmons to play him at like at the end of the turn. So you could do some cool stuff like, oh, like I'll evolve into my Gallantmon, like give it Blitz, maybe trash a security or raid into something and then when I'm done doing all that, I can pop it to play this guy, delete something, and then go into, like, a Crimson mode after that. Like, I can see the potential for this card, but it's just, like, another slow win more card in a deck that already had enough slow cards and, and, and four-cost evolutions. Uh, so I'll probably just put Gallon in Tier 2. Like, this deck is it, just always just one or two cards short from being good. Um, who knows, maybe the day will come where Gallon's actually good, but I don't digress. Uh, next is going to be Machine Dramon or Chaos Dramon, a deck that is very near and dear to my own heart. Um, I have played this a lot over the past couple weeks, BG12, still really solid throughout EX4. Um, and this deck has a lot of stuff going for it. It reminds me of Black War Greymon, very, very toolboxy deck, uh, makes unkillable stacks, very big Digimon, lots of removal effects, and just everything I pretty much like in, in Digimon, just being able to control the board uh, with your big boss monsters. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a Chaos in 1.5. This has a really strong matchup uh, into Red Hybrid, into Bloom, still pretty decent into Beelzemon. Now that um, the deck's a little bit slower, I think your chances of winning that matchup would go up. Um, the only real bad matchups you have are something like Hunters, uh, which we'll get to in a second, but Machine Dramon I still think is a pretty strong um, tier 1.5-ish or rogue strategy. Just depending on the meta, this deck has a lot of things going for it. Um, speaking of, uh, the devil is going to be our Stardramon uh, Hunters over here. Probably the deck that most people uh, were confused as to why this didn't get hit at all or basically just walked off scot-free off of the most recent ban list. And, and I mean, not to say that it was doing anything crazy. If you look at any of the past tournament results from the past couple of weeks, uh, this deck was pretty much always in top cut, but it wasn't doing anything outrageous. Beelzemon was the main threat. Um, and then not to mention a lot of the older, like, x anybody decks that would probably have come back. Um, if Bandai didn't hit those as well. So, uh, Superior Mode, an absolutely insane card. Quartzmon, absolutely unfair card. Uh, you have a lot of access to really, really crazy plays in this deck. And I think with the kind of reduction in the amount of people who are going to be playing Belzemon and kind of lowering of its power ceiling, this is going to be one of the strongest decks in the format. I already thought it was Tier 1 before EX4. Now EX4 with the new ban list, I think Hunters is definitively one of the best decks. Very memory efficient, very consistent, high ceiling. There's just like nothing else that's missing from the deck um, as far as things you would want out of a tier one contender. Uh, next deck is going to be uh, Dark Nightmon. Um, this deck does get more support in EX4, actually. Uh, I don't actually know, like, I think most of it's, like, blue flare support, but we do get, like, a new Deadly Axemon. Uh, we get Graze Nightmon as well. Uh, so a lot of cool new stuff. Uh, that we get out like indirect support as well as like direct support from um, some of the from new guys, um, but I still think like it's just more of a roguish pick than anything. I still don't think this deck will really do anything. In the past couple sets, it's gotten support basically since like BT10, right? We got Dark Knight stuff, we got Darkness Bogramon, we got uh, now Grey's Nightmon stuff, and and it can do some really cool things, popping tamers, setting up blockers really annoying floating plays, um, but I still just don't think this deck is going to do anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in Rogue. Uh, maybe depending on the meta, it could be good, but I digress. Uh, next is going to be Crossheart. Um, this deck honestly kind of surprised me at how little play I think it's seen over the past um, format. Obviously, it was really, really strong in the BT10 and 11. Um, BT12 with the release of Hunters, I think that was the go-to uh, Digicross deck. Um, and Crossheart kind of fell off a little bit, even though we did get access to the superior mode, Shatmon Cross 7 superior mode, is still a really, really powerful win condition. Um, and this deck really hasn't gotten hit at all outside of the cross 4 hit uh, from BT10. The Trio Tamer, Taiki, cross 3, all these cards are still 4. Uh, Merva cross, I think, is a variant that has been seeing a little bit more play. Um, but anyways, this deck, I think, is still really strong and not sure really why it hasn't been seeing as much play. 
basically I think my theory is that there's just better options so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in 1.5 still a really strong deck still very fast still very consistent it does what the cross heart does the best swing into your security drawing cards and then rushing four to five times in a single turn to finish off the game um, but nothing too outlandish I think especially X4 doesn't really get any new support um, Ravemon is one of the newer decks that has been introduced and is going to get a lot more support uh, in the coming set with the BT-13 uh, being data squad focused, of course. Um, but unfortunately, I think at the time being, uh, you do get like the one line, right? You get like Ravemon with the Crow, Peck, Falcomon, as well as uh, your Tamer actually comes out in EX4, not BT-13, surprisingly. Uh, so this deck can do some cool things, like uh, it dodges a lot of different forms of removal. Uh, you get to hand loop your opponent, I guess but like uh, this deck is just like not good man I, as cool as i think of a mechanic as it is and like as good as i want it to be while it isn't unplayable i think this deck is like terrible like even bt13 I, I haven't tested that format so i really can't say for for sure yet but i honestly don't even think with those cards it's like good at all um, next is going to be all force another deck i really really enjoy and uh, tested out a lot in bt12 um, and it's still going strong in EX4. Um, unfortunately, your worst matchup being Hunters is pretty detrimental, uh, but really strong into Red Hybrid, still pretty strong into Beals, they have being able to set up decoy blockers. Um, sorry, not decoy, evade blockers, being able to bounce things, getting around on deletions like uh, Bealsamon X or the Balmon on deletion, or being able to get around your opponent's red hybrid on deletions, uh, I think is really good. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in 1.5. Uh, decent answer to a lot of the meta decks, still just a little bit inconsistent, um, unfortunately, and really bad into um, Hunters is going to hold it back, I think, a little bit, but I think it'll still see a lot of play. Like, All Force is, again, one of those decks, uh, like Chaos Dramon, that is just like a sneak into top cuts here and there and I don't think it'll ever really go away for a while the deck is still really really powerful um, the Sukumon deck it does this actually get support in EX4 I don't really think so um, I don't think it gets anything outside of just generic like yellow black stuff uh, so this deck is still terrible like I remember when King Sukumon came out and people were like oh we're gonna bring this back off a of hell site and like turn your black war into like a Sukumon and it just never happens because this card is just like so conditional it's just, it's just not good, guys. I'm going to go ahead and just put this in the unplayable uh, category. Um, so next we got Black War Greymon. Uh, this deck also got indirect support with the Raid War Greymon. I decided to kind of just keep these different um, just because Black War Greymon I think is still more focused on defensive plays while War Greymon playing like War Grey X and the Raid War Greymon stuff um, and more focused on spitting out your tamers for free. Uh, Black War Greymon again is still sneaking in a top cut, still has really strong matchups I think into Red Hybrid and Beelzemon. But again, it's just a speed thing, and the fact that Hunters is here to, like, Hunters low-key just gatekeeps, like, all of the tier 1.5 and tier 2 decks. Like, most of these decks cannot deal with the fact that uh, Superior Mode just tucks you underneath, like, a Tamer or something. Like, Chaos Dramon protection for against literally everything except for that. Um, same thing with, like, your Superior Modes and your Cross 7s. Like, you have Material Save, you don't care if you get deleted by an Emperor or, like, an option card from Beals or something. But if if you get tucked you just lose all your cards like it's just really really unfortunate but that's just the way it is uh black world Greymont, i think is going to be the same way i think it's sitting in a 1.5 uh category really strong but uh, still just a little bit too slow uh merva cross i'm gonna go ahead and, and represent this with merva cross i think this deck is still really strong um similar to cross heart where it's seen a little bit less play um but the explosiveness is still there being able to gravity crush blinding race play out of merva mon Swing three times, it's still pretty crazy. Um, just like a little bit less consistent, I suppose, than what um, these other aggro decks are already doing. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in 1.5. Uh, Galactic Bond, this deck is literally not real. <laughs> We're not talking about this. Uh, Mirage Galgamon, uh, the Galmon deck's pretty cool. I don't think this really does anything until uh, BT13. Honestly, as a standalone deck, I would also have to just put this in unplayable. I, I don't really think this deck is doing anything. Uh, Examon, uh, I actually played against this in my recent regional runs. This deck's still pretty cool. Um, again, same story as, like, the other defensive, like, 1.5 tier 2-ish decks. Evade is a really cool mechanic. Big blockers are really cool. But when you spend three turns building up a stack only for it to get, like, double clustered or, like, Emperor Grade or, like, 
tucked with a superior mode, it's just really, really unfortunate. I'll put this in 1.5, like low 1.5, maybe tier 2. It still does some really cool things, but just not super um, super relevant at the moment, I think. Uh, other random decks, I guess, uh, per Red Purple Imperial, this deck's not real. Uh, Dorbic, uh, this deck is, like, okay, I suppose. Again, it's just, like, there's better options, but maybe Dorbic as, like, a Mega is, is pretty decent. That might see some play. I'm gonna go ahead and put it there. Uh, Bloom Lord, wow, this this is a deck, dude. Uh, Bloom Lord, I honestly was not too like this was not too high on my radar. Um, for the ultimate cups and stuff, obviously the the deck was just like built to be a mono green powerhouse. Uh, but for regular format, I didn't think this would do as much as it is right now in set uh, 12. Um, so for EX4, as long as nothing gets hit, you still got access to Quartzmon. Maybe you can throw in some Alliance plays there. Uh, but this this deck is still insane. I'm going to put this in Tier 1. Uh, you've got just so many just tools at your disposal, being able to bottom stack, deck stuff with Hydra, uh, suspend the field with Quartz, being able to you know gain a billion memory off of uh, Bloom Lord himself. And not to mention, HBD is still at 1. Bandai, if you're watching this, can you please just ban Hidden Potential Discovered? Th that card does not need to exist. Like, this deck is memory efficient enough. I don't need my opponent to, like, Evo a Hydramon for 0 and then suspend my guy gaining a memory. And then, like, s you know, I, I don't need that. Like, please, just get rid of HPD. Uh, that's a side note. But uh, anyways, uh, Minerva Mon, this deck is really cool still. Uh, it's just, like, not doing... I'm going to put this in Tier 2. I'm sorry for all you purple players. Uh, this deck's just, like... I mean, it, it's cool. I don't want to say it's not good. It is it is really cool. I'm a big fan of this deck. But it's just, like, maybe I'll put it, like, right here. It's not quite as strong as, like, some of the other Tier 1.5 decks. But not really that um, good enough to put in Tier 1. Uh, Jessmon, uh, this deck uh, hasn't really done anything for a while. Uh, Melga, I think post ban list, this deck is probably not very playable. Sure, if you high roll, you can do the same three to four damage you were doing in a turn, bounce some stuff. Uh, but against Emperor Grey, what are you doing? What are you doing against the Superior Mode or against the Hydramon? Or if you hit a single option card in Beals, again, I think these a lot of these decks are just gatekeeping a lot of the um, tier 1.5 and lower decks. I'm gonna go ahead and put Melga somewhere high tier two. Uh, same thing with armor. Uh, this deck is just really cool, um, and I think pretty decent into like Emperor Grey and Beals, but into Hunters and Bloom, uh, yeah, you better luck next time. I'm gonna put this in, uh, I'll put this in tier 2. The deck's still really cool. Magnemon's a card. Um, you know, Magnemon X is another card, but uh, I, I doubt, like, again, they're just not really doing anything against the meta decks. Uh, Grandis, with Grand Kuagamon at 1, this deck just becomes a really bad, like, board control deck. It just does what bloom lord does but worse this deck is like really not good and uh i'm not sorry at all i'm very glad uh this deck got hit if if any grins players are watching this like go lick some windows man this this deck does deserve to be obliterated please god never put any of those cards uh the grandest promo back to more than one like th thank god this card got hit uh, anyways uh mastamon uh still really cool deck uh, we'll, we'll put this in tier two i'll definitely put it above grandest uh maybe somewhere between gallant and uh ultra s um i don't really know if we got any purple yellow support really so i think you're still just doing the same thing you were doing before hoping degrades are in your security and trying to uh not die against the tier one decks uh raid war gray war gray mon uh i think this deck's pretty solid i'd put it in a 1.5 category probably right next to black war gray um really strong defensively again just a little bit slow but you can out most boards uh if you do draw your pieces uh, now, Blue Flare, I want to talk about because this deck is pretty uh, insane. Um, now, while I might not put it quite at Tier 1, I'm going to put it in High 1.5. I think the access to now another named Metal Greymon that does pretty much what you want it to do. It's a 3 cost with Rush, Material Save, all that good stuff is really, really insane. The new uh, Nene Kiriha is really crazy. Uh, Grey's Nightmon, not so much, but like you do get a lot of really cool support. So I think Blue Flare is going to be a sleeper deck um, or maybe it'll just skyrocket to tier one um, but from the testing i've done this deck is pretty insane it can definitely hold its own um, but again just being able to deal with the, the, these two decks is is the problem uh dragon links this deck's not real Setcon, this deck is i mean the Setcon is another one of those deck that just like sneaks in there every now and then so i'll put this in 1.5 um definitely still strong into some of the tier one decks but it's just like really slow uh, Bonds, I, who, I don't, I, no, these, these decks, none of these are real, Eosmon, sorry, yeah, get out of here. 
Uh, Bill Star, uh, this card I think will be relevant for quite a while. We'll always get more seven cost options, so just depending on the meta, uh, this deck could always come back. So I'll go ahead and put this in. I'll put this somewhere tier two. Uh, Reaper for ulti cup. I think this deck's pretty good, but it's not really doing anything uh, Especially once we get Yggdrasil drizzle and the royal knights in thir set 13. That's just a better version of Reaper uh, I guess this is Leomon rush uh, this deck's not real Sakuyamon, I this does get some new support with the Kuzuha line. I think it does some really cool things um, Will it be tier one? Probably not, but it's a pretty solid control deck. You've got a, a lot of access to um, like bouncing plays, you got uh, free option plays, and I like that Kuzha doesn't even um, like restrict you into plugins. I'm pretty sure it's just like any option card that, yeah, five cost or lower option card. Obviously, you still got to meet the color restriction, but really, really cool card. Um, so, yeah, I'll put Sakuya in like a 1.5, maybe a lowish 1.5. Uh, Command Drummond slash D Brigade, uh, we'll go rogue with that one. Alliance, uh, I think these cards are actually really cool. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Alliance keyword, um, it basically is this new gimmick for the yellow green deck, which lets you, uh, when attacking, suspend another Digimon, uh, and then add that power to this Digimon's DP and gain second attack plus one. And then the new Cherubimon boss monster, um, as well as the Mega Gargo, do some really cool things. I so think the Cherubimon like floats into, um, yeah, again, it gives this Digimon and something else on deletion play this from track without paying the cost so pretty annoying to deal with um also one of my friends was playing like ordeen mon in this deck because you can make it with like this plus the uh, yellow cherubi mon so maybe that's the sauce i don't know but uh this deck's decent like i'll put in somewhere in tier two um jesse mon this deck's not real uh alpha mon i think this deck is ooh, i think this deck's rogue until bt13 and then it BT13, I'll put it right, like right here. Uh, set 13, I think it actually becomes like 1.5 again. Like this deck actually gets another door. Greymon, you get another full line. Does a lot of really cool things. Um, Yellow Hybrid, this deck is always just going to be around. There's there's those copers who will never let Jet Sylphie go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in 1.5. Um, Blue Hybrid, oof. This deck is still pretty strong. Uh, I think it's probably better than a lot of the one than the uh, tier 2 decks, but... Is it really 1.5? Maybe not. Let's put it like high tier two. Like this, this. I think this topped like an ulti cup or like a regional like a while ago in Latam. If correct me if I'm wrong, but this deck was like doing something. Um, but I, I don't think it's enough. Like blue flare is just like better at what it does. Uh, green hybrid. As much as I love this deck, this deck does not exist. Uh, now for just the last one, uh, I'm gonna kind of just gonna leave these three options that are a little bit redundant. We already talked about Red Hybrid and Bloom Quartz and Blue Flare. Uh, the last deck I did want to talk about, save the best for last, is going to be Shine Greymon, guys. We got Marcus in the game now. We got the BT12 Shine Greymon. We got Shine Greymon Ruin Mode. This card is the reason to play the deck in set four or ex4 um now this card is really insane being able to have a global minus 5k or global minus um 10k effect is pretty insane um being able to basically stun your opponent from bringing anything out of breeding or playing anything new with in fear of its dying um is this deck good no th no this this deck is terrible man like i've i've ran a lot of sets with shine greymon trust me i i tried to cope with this deck as early as possible and even as good as ruin mode is like you can steal games with that card but the deck itself is just like it, it does not do anything man like your your best play is like Marcus evolve into Rise Greymon, gain a memory, like uh, get, get the recover off the Marcus dying, or like uh, go into Shine Greymon, get two checks, like kill something with the Shine, and then Rune Mode. Like those are some strong plays, but the deck is just slow and consistent and doesn't have like a win condition yet. So I would just say uh, it's 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 a pretty it's a pretty strong tier two contender um, at that. But guys, with that, that is going to do it for this video, and this is going to be uh, our tier list for the EX4 meta. Um, a lot of you guys have told me in past tier lists. Um, that I kind of put too many uh, decks in tier one, and and I definitely do agree with that now going back through it. So um, I try to just limit this to the I think the most effective uh, tactics available, the, the meta decks, the 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 powerhouses, the decks that are going to be seeing the most representation and the really really um, that are really strong into basically everything else. 1.5 again gate kept by a lot of these decks but these have the potential to be competitive my top and a regional here and there uh rogue maybe depending on the meta these could be played and then unplayable speaks for itself but guys let me know down in the comment section below if you agree with my list thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time